Well, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I will go ahead and share my screen with you. I'm so happy to see all of you here. Let's go ahead. I'm going to share my desktop and get this started. And of course, this uh, disclaimer here in the beginning before we get started, I just wanted to make sure everyone knows, of course, this is for educational, informational purposes, and uh, don't change any of your medications or, or add in anything um, without consulting your own doctor. And um, also just wanted to thank you. <laughs> thank you all for being here. The topic of the presentation this evening is how to use herbs, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies to transform stress, anxiety, and depression. And I know most of you on, on the um, webinar here, but for those of you who I don't know, I'm Cynthia Liburd. I'm a medical doctor and I have a private practice in Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm also the founder of thejoyprescription.com. And I'll let you know about that a little bit later on. So I wanted to start with this beautiful quote by a very strong woman, Eleanor Roosevelt. And she said, that you gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. And I put this at the beginning just to really acknowledge um, you and the fact that you're showing up for yourself, just encourage you that when we, when we take the time to and, and have the courage to really look at things that are generating fear and anxiety, for us, uh, we grow and it's a beautiful opportunity. So uh, thank you for being here for yourself tonight. And I also I wanted just to take a moment to acknowledge, you know, many of us have a lot going on and, you know, probably have our, our cell phone <laughs> next to us and wanted to encourage you that even if you feel overwhelmed and scattered, it's, it's a great idea just to you know, put the phone down, turn off Facebook, close out your email inbox and just give yourself the gift of this time uh, and just focus on, on what we're talking about. Okay, so what, what we'll cover tonight, I have um, kind of an ambitious <laughs> agenda, so we'll, we'll see how uh, we can get through this material and I'll save time for questions in the end. So I'm going to teach you about the relaxation response and how to induce it. And we're going to do a breathing exercise to help uh, soothe, soothe our souls. Um, I'm going to discuss the risk factors for brain dysfunction and, and for anxiety and depression. Um, and the heart of our talk today is about how to safely and effectively use lifestyle medicine and natural therapies to calm our brain waves, get restorative sleep, build resilience and improve our mood. So tall order. Uh, I will also at the end invite you to join me in the Joy Prescription community. And for those of you who would like an opportunity to reach out and learn more about working with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'll, I'll give you that information as well. We'll do questions and answers. And at the end, if you stick around to the end, I'll, I'll share a free gift with you. All right, so let's get started. This webinar is really for everyone, but it's especially for you if you're suffering with stress. And I don't know if there's anyone on planet Earth right now who couldn't raise their hand and say, that's me. You know, we're going through a very uh, challenging time right now as uh, human beings. Um, also, this webinar is specifically for people dealing with anxiety in its many forms. And we know that, you know, anxiety can be mental. It can um, be worries and fear of the future. And it also can be very physical in the form of panic attacks, um, heart palpitations, muscle tension, you know, just uh, that feeling keyed up or um, uneasy, like you can't relax. Um, so there's a lot of manifestations of anxiety, both physical and mental. And then uh, depression, and you know, of course, clinical depression is um, 
on one end of the spectrum, but you can be anywhere in between of just feeling down and blue, irritable, um, and uh, also with a, a full-blown uh, major depressive disorder. Um, I will speak to that and also people dealing with chronic fatigue, which tends to go right along with suffering with anxiety and depression because as you probably are aware, those conditions are really taxing on our body and our brains and it can really deplete our energy and that can contribute to chronic fatigue and a decline in our health over time and leave us vulnerable to other chronic medical conditions. So, and you know, this, this webinar is also for you if you're currently taking a prescription drug for your mood, for anxiety or depression, insomnia, and you're concerned about drug side effects, um, or you know, if, if it's not working, or if you're just you know, wanting to find alternatives and, and ways to come off of that safely over time. So we'll be talking about that. And then social withdrawal is a common symptom of mood disorders. And if you're experiencing that, um, that you're in the right place too. So, all right, I will uh, just summarize basically the webinars for anyone struggling with stress, mental health concerns, or warning signs of burnout. And that you know, has characteristics of loss of joy, chronic fatigue, irritability, sleep disturbance, feelings of hopelessness, brain fog, et cetera. The list goes on and on. And, and of course, you're, you're welcome here also if you're a family member or a friend that is seeking to support a loved one who's suffering with these uh, warning signs or, or with a mental illness. So you're in the right place if that applies to you. Just a brief introduction. I'm uh, Cynthia Leibert, so we'll go by Cindy. I'm a functional medicine physician and practice in Asheville, North Carolina. I um, will give you just a brief overview of my training, my background. I grew up in the Midwest in Southern Illinois and I went to college at St. Louis University where I earned my BS in biology went on to uh, medical school at Loyola in Chicago for four years, and then had the opportunity to study family medicine in my residency training program in Asheville at Mayhek, and uh, shortly thereafter became board certified in family medicine. So the top half of the slide took me about 11 years. Um, after residency, I, I knew I wanted more tools in my toolkit and so did a lot of self-study around the areas of herbalism, mind-body medicine, nutrition, and um, sat for the American Board of Integrative Holistic Medicine and, and uh, earned my diplomat status with that board. And then finally, over the last 10 years, I've uh, done some more in-depth study through the Institute for Functional Medicine. And, and I'm now a, a certified practitioner with that organization as well. So that's, that's my background educationally. And I wanted to, to just summarize um, sort of my, my path through uh, the conventional medicine training and also working for many years as a primary care physician in family medicine, small rural town and doing the full scope of family medicine. You know, it's definitely a privilege, and I enjoyed many aspects of it, but unfortunately um, just became disillusioned over time with the, uh, the business model of medicine that um, sort of incentivizes doctors to see patients very rapidly for, you know, five to seven minute type visits. And, um, you know, I, I also did not feel I was doing my patients any favors by just prescribing band-aid type medications for chronic conditions that really needed to be addressed through um, intensive lifestyle change. And so I'm going to read you this quote from Dr. Mark Nelson that I uh, found years ago. And I think it really just sums up my sentiment around the um, state of, of primary care, of health care in this country. And he asked this question. 
How are we to understand the predicament we now find ourselves in as healthcare providers? A healthcare system that provides neither health nor care and is certainly not a system, but rather a patchwork quilt of fix-it medicine and technology, a bureaucratic albatross sustained by enormous financial cost and surviving at the expense of untold human lives and suffering. How has it come to pass that we physicians have been taught, incentivized, and paid to fix, but not to heal, to treat, but not to prevent, to compartmentalize and fragment, but not to create health? So a really, really important question here. And I just wanted to take a, a few moments to talk about the state of healthcare right now. Um, we do know we have an epidemic of chronic disease, uh, particularly the chronic degenerative diseases of aging, diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and the like. Um, we have a mental health care crisis in this country where people are not uh, being well served uh, with the resources that we have. Uh, there's an explosion in the cost of health care. There's a physician shortage. Physician burnout is a really huge problem. And of course, you know, we know that patients overall are dissatisfied with the state of um, care where their short visits and it's really focused on pharmaceutical drug emphasis. So that's kind of the baseline state of healthcare. And of course, we we all are in the midst of experiencing this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, which has, has really just compounded the underlying uh, problems with our health system. And you know, we've got people that are afraid to leave their home to seek medical care. There's just a lot of turmoil going on. And so part of what I hope to do with this presentation is to provide some solutions to that. Um, I'm very sensitive to the fact that functional medical care, you know, like I provide, it's very intensive and personalized, one-on-one uh, -on -one care is wonderful and very helpful, but it is out of reach for many due to the financial cost and the vast majority of functional medicine doctors being outside of the, the insurance model. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak to that as well. So um, that's the state of healthcare, <laughs> and, and just to, not to um, take any more time telling you about my journey, but I'll sum up this, um, my experience with a quote from Maya Angelou, and you might relate to this as well in your own life and situations in your own life, but I feel that, you know, I um, am where I am for a reason, and it's been kind of a circuitous path, but Here's, um, here's how Maya uh, explains it. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. Okay, so let's talk about stress. <laughs> and, you know, right now, um, I just really want to acknowledge that, you know, as a a human species were under probably you know some of the greatest stress that we've faced and in in the modern world and now with the the pandemic the viral pandemic there's you know so much uncertainty so much struggle and hurt and questions that are going on um, and so you know what does that mean for us and our health uh, we know that stress particularly chronic unremitting stress that's not managed leads to this biochemical storm in our body. We're really well equipped to take in information from the outside world, you know, through our senses and, and into our brain that alerts our body if there's a threat to our existence, our well-being. And our system is exquisite in its ability to take in that information and convert it to messages through you know, the brain first, signaling to the adrenal glands uh, to make stress hormones that then work all throughout the body and allow, um, allows the body to 
basically shunt resources away from our basic physiological processes and, and just maintenance things to, that, that we do all the time. It shunts energy away from that and allows us to mobilize extra energy to either you know, fight off, run away, or um, you know, freeze to deal with what we perceive as a threat. And of course, that's uh, when, when you think about our modern day troubles, the things that we're all facing right now, you know, the, the joblessness, the loss of income, uh, economic uncertainty, uh, worries about loved ones uh, being ill, our own health, all of those things, uh, they are threats to our survival and our well being. But this biochemical storm that gets generated in our body when our stress response is constantly triggered, it's not helping us to think clearly and to solve problems in our life because, you know, it's not like we're, we're facing a, um, you know, a mugger in an alley or a, a lion on the prairie that we need to run away or try to defend ourselves. So my, um, my point in, in talking about this is that there are strategies to be able to counteract this, our sympathetic nervous system. And um, I want to just share with you all of these myriad manifestations of stress and what it can look like in the body. Everything from excessive fatigue, feeling nervous, keyed up, irritable, depressed, trouble concentrating, um, just being fearful, uh, overall feeling weak, frustrated, or I don't know about any of you, but uh, certainly um, during times of, of stress, I, I um, end up feeling hungry <laughs> all of the time and having food cravings and things. And uh, you know, that's, that's just part of a long list, as you can see here, everything from PMS, headaches, muscle pain, digestive imbalances, all of this can be due to that biochemical storm that happens when our stress response gets triggered and doesn't get relief. So let's talk about what we can do about that and, and also why it happens. So here is a diagram of the sympathetic nervous system. You can see the brain there on the left with the spinal cord attached to that. And you know, we take in information from our environment and our brain sends this uh, cascade of you know, electrical impulses and uh, triggers all our different organs, everything from our pupils, dilating the pupils, acting on the, the salivary glands, our lungs, uh, heart, skin, digestive tract, our, our liver, um, and especially that little adrenal gland there sitting on top of the, the kidney. Um, that's what secretes cortisol and epinephrine and the stress hormones that, that tell the rest of our body to shut those resources away and, and just you know, get into the fight or flight mode. So what we want to talk about is how to induce the relaxation response. And Herbert Benson is a physician that, that first uh, coined this term, the relaxation response. He says that it's a physical state of deep rest that changes the physical and emotional response to stress. And it's the opposite of the fight or flight response. And we, we know that our autonomic nervous system, that's the part of our nervous system that regulates all the automatic functions like digestion and, and uh, relaxation, um, that system is comprised of two branches, the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. And normally they're in this you know, dynamic balance and they keep our body finely tuned and, and regulated. And you, you know, at, at times of when our body perceives a stress threat, an acute threat to our system, it it really goes into sympathetic mode. And, and so what I'm gonna spend the next few minutes talking about is how to really ramp up and turn on that parasympathetic nervous system 
to counterbalance the, the overdrive of the sympathetic state that, that many of us are dealing with. So conventional medicine, of course, has pharmaceutical drugs that we can use to do that, um, to band-aid symptoms of you know, anxiety and panic and feeling keyed up, or even, even just the, the chronic diseases and symptoms that happen from prolonged stress, we can use pharmaceutical drugs to alleviate symptoms. But unfortunately, as you probably are aware, that doesn't get to the root of why we have them. And it also leaves us vulnerable to other side effects of the drugs. And you know, if you're on multiple drugs, um, to interactions, and they can be expensive as well. So what's the alternative and, and uh, what's the approach that I recommend? Um, so it really comes down to root cause medicine or functional medicine is a different, different term for that. And uh, let me just explain the approach that I take. And I think it just is good doctoring. It makes good sense to uh, spend time looking at your individual timeline from the time you were conceived or even before that, how, how was your mom's health? Uh, how was the pregnancy, the labor and delivery process? How were you born? What mode of delivery? Was it cesarean section or vaginal delivery? How much did you weigh? Were you preterm or, or late? Um, you know, what, what sort of uh, antibiotics did your mom have during labor? All of these things have a profound influence on our health, our brain health, our mental health, our microbiome, and our gut. And so they're all part of the picture of looking at root causes. And then, you know, I go through every decade of life and, and look for, you know, we try to pull out any important clues from your history of, you know, your, what was your nutrition like? What kind of exposures have you had? Um, any parasites or heavy metals? Any kind of uh, lifestyle choices, you know, drugs, alcohol, um, things like that. Um, teeth infections, hospitalizations, traumas, accidents. What were your relationships like or what are they like now? Where have you traveled? All of these points uh, on the timeline, on your health timeline, are really critical to understanding the you as an individual and, and teasing out the root causes of um, brain-based symptoms. So this is a really key slide, and I'm going to read the sentence for you, and then I'm going to unpack it. So there is a gap between health and disease. It can be measured in function. And this pretty much sums up what functional medicine is. And, uh, you know, a good way to understand this concept is for the person, you know, maybe, maybe you have gone to the doctor and, you know, said, I'm just, you know, I'm not feeling well, I'm tired, I'm not sleeping well, I'm anxious, I'm struggling with irritability, uh, mood, challenges and you know you have a physical exam do some re routine blood work and everything comes out perfectly normal you know, your complete blood counts normal uh, no anemia all your metabolic profiles normal blood sugar kidneys liver electrolytes thyroid test is normal so you know you're fine you're healthy um, you know, here's a, a medication for an antidepressant or a referral to a counselor. That's sort of the, the traditional approach for dealing with mood uh, concerns. And um, my, my opinion is that it's uh, not enough to do that, that we need to look at not just what is normal, <laughs> but where you are on that spectrum of normal and where is normal for you. And so measuring function is really a key part of what functional medicine is about. And let me share with you on the next slide here, this is called the, the functional medicine matrix or my rendition of it. And you can see the matrix is how we look at the body. It's, it's sort of an operating system for medicine, the practice of medicine. 
And in the center are mental, emotional, and spiritual health. And, and it's in the center for a reason because it's so crucial to all the rest of our physiology. And the different nodes uh, here that you see from assimilation, transport, de defense and repair, energy, biotransformation, elimination, communication, and structural integrity, all of these nodes, they don't correspond to one particular organ or even organ system, but they're how it's the web of how the body systems work together. And this is where we go to look for the root causes of dysfunction in the body that contribute to disease, whether that's anxiety or depression or diabetes or cancer or autoimmunity. All, um, all of these nodes really um, need to be optimized and, and we can do that through the detailed history, through looking at the timeline and also um, doing diagnostic testing, not just looking for quote normal, but seeing a more functional level test like your, what's your omega-3 fatty acid status and where are you on your vitamin D level? Is it not normal, but is it optimal? Uh, looking at a full thyroid panel, you know, these sort of things is um, the way to, to get to the root cause of things. So wanted to briefly talk about the functional medicine therapeutic approach, and then we'll shift into learning how to breathe, to soothe our system, how to calm our brain waves, and really get into some very specifics about natural medicine and things that you can take you know, from here from our talk today and just implement right away. So, but this is more of a, a broad overview of the therapeutic approach that I take in my practice. Uh, nutrition is absolutely key, so adding the proper fuel to our body. Um, so nutrigenomics and blood sugar balance is critical in particular for brain health, and that's using nutrition, whole foods, to uh, shift the way that our genes are being expressed to um, help us to manifest uh, greater health and uh, calming the brain waves. We do that through a variety of things, and I'll, I'll address that in more detail as we go on. I'll also touch on healing the gut, which is central to our brain health. There's this super highway of information that flows uh, between the brain and the gut, and the gut and the brain, and that's a, a huge topic and probably foundational to what we're talking about. Uh, hormone balance mentioned that is uh, really critical as well. Addressing inflammation and body composition, jumpstarting metabolism, um, so improving our energy production, and then also the um, addressing detoxification and and um, limiting the effects of environmental toxins on our system. So this is a huge, you know, huge topic <laughs> that can take a long time to unpack, but I just wanted to give you the overview uh, here today. So, so here we go. This is one of my dear little daughters <laughs> many years ago in her papa son swing. And don't we wish we, we had one of these to fall asleep in. So I'm going to talk about the relaxation response and how to induce it. Okay, so uh, it's as simple as breathing, believe it or not. And I know it, it may sound too, too good to be true or just too simple to really make a difference. Or, or maybe you've tried uh, breathing techniques in the past and you haven't been successful. I just want to really encourage you that it is probably one of the most powerful tools that you have. You don't need to buy anything or go anywhere to do it. It is something you have at every moment. You can consciously tune into your breath and shift the way that you're breathing. And I wanted to do um, just a little experiential time here with you, just having you if you feel comfortable placing your one hand on your heart and one hand on your lower abdomen, on your tummy, and just kind of closing your eyes, 
relaxing all the muscles in your head and your thorax <laughs> and just throughout your whole body just trying to relax and then just ever so gently breathing into the count of four and out to the count of four and just let's do that for three more breaths so when you're doing that it's it's important to try to breathe um, down into your belly and have your your belly expand instead of breathing from the the upper chest here you want to try to breathe from your belly and just when you're holding your hand over your heart here just you know sending yourself love compassion kindness and you know even even when you're doing this um, you know you can take five ten minutes and do this um, once or twice a day and use it as a uh, time to pray and, and send love and compassion, not only to yourself, but also to I think in your mind's eye to all of the people in your life, in your, in your family and your workplace and your community and even to your country and to your, into the entire world. And, and uh, five minutes of doing breathing like that with your hand in your heart and your tummy and just relaxing your body, um, paying attention to your breath, and sending yourself loving kindness and compassion and sending that out to the rest of the world is absolutely restorative <laughs> and will activate your parasympathetic nervous system and help to create uh, resilience in your body, in your nervous system, and help you to deal with the times when you're sympathetic nervous system gets overactivated from all the stressors that that are everywhere so um, i wanted to briefly talk about different risk factors for brain dysfunction and this uh, is a subtyping that actually i learned from dr dale bredesen he's a world-renowned expert in the pathophysiology and the underlying root causes of alzheimer's disease so I, I got an opportunity to study with him and he outlined these different subtypes of risk factors for cognitive decline and for different types of Alzheimer's disease. And it didn't take me too long to figure out that these are actually uh, applicable to mental illness as well. And so this is also part of what I do in my practice is to help people identify risk factors that are in these subtypes and address them so that their brain can function better, um, can heal mood disorders, and uh, over time help you prevent uh, cognitive decline with aging. So the first subtype that's really critical is inflammatory. And we can measure that on blood work. You can get a HSCRP. That's a, a marker for generalized inflammation in the body. And the lower, the better on that. Less than 0.5 is, is optimal. Um, you know, average is one to three, but um, you know, above that is, is really concerning that um, you're, there's a chemical fire going on in the body and that, that can affect your brain health and leave you vulnerable to depression and cognitive decline. And there's a lot of reasons for inflammation, you know, stress. <laughs> is a huge one, uh, sleep deprivation, inflammatory foods, sugar, uh, the list goes on and on, but um, inflammatory um, subtype is, is really important and um, a simple way to do that is measuring the CRP on blood work. Um, infectious is another subtype and there's so many different viruses and things that we encounter throughout our life from the Epstein-Barr virus, whether you were young and had actual the mono illness or, or many people have it and don't have symptoms um, from getting bit from a tick bite and getting a Borrelia a burgdorferi uh, infection from, from a tick, a Lyme disease, herpes infection, cold sores, Anything that affects <laughs> our um, head, the nose, the sinuses, the dental infections, that is close to your brain and that can um, tend to put us at risk for cognitive decline as we age and 
I wouldn't be surprised if eventually there's a connection, you know, found between that and uh, mood disorders as well. Glycotoxic is another subtype that has to do with our blood sugar balance. And the way that we can look into that is your fasting blood sugar, your um, hemoglobin A1C, which is kind of a three month marker of how well your blood sugar has been controlled, and your fasting insulin level. So we wanna optimize all of those. Um, the fasting blood sugar should be less than 85 or around 85 is optimal. Hemoglobin A1C, the lower the better. Uh, 5.7 to 6.4 is considered prediabetes, so we want to be well below that in the low fives or less on the A1C. And you also want your insulin level to be um, fairly low. So um, atrophic, and that is a subtype that has to do with our hormones, our micronutrient status, different growth factors that help our brain to our neural network to stay uh, strong and well connected and our brain to function well. So um, that, that involves you know, looking at hormone levels, sex hormones, estrogen, testosterone, thyroid, vitamin D levels, and, and the like. Um, toxic subtypes, and there's so much toxicity, it's, it's kind of a daunting uh, thing to explore, but we're talking about heavy metals, environmental chemicals, plasticizers, um, things like that. Um, you know, and, and a simple way to address this is just to uh, look at, at what exposures you're having, what are you putting on your body and in your body through food and personal care products. But this is a, a huge topic and I'll just uh, move on to the next one here. Vascular, of course the the arteries and, and blood vessels that supply blood to our brain, it's really critical that those are working well and, and giving us good oxygen to our brain for it to work well. And um, we know that trauma, of course, head trauma, and also um, you know, childhood trauma or life traumas can affect our brain in, in significant ways too. So this is kind of a framework for looking at the different risk factors for brain dysfunction. And wanted to just share with you um, a little bit more about my training with Dr. Dale Bredesen. That's me there in the scarf <laughs> with the longer hair. And a few years ago, next to Dr. Bredesen, I got to do um, training with him out at the Buck Institute for Research on Aging in Novato, California. And uh, it's, it was a life-changing experience. And I've just learned so much from him about uh, brain health. Uh, this is one of the quotes that, that really just captivated me that uh, basically Dr. Bredesen is a Duke trained neurologist. You know, he's had his own lab for many, many years for the past 30 years, really. He's been working on the molecular mechanisms for neurodegeneration. And he said that the basic molecular neuroscience that we've been doing in the lab for the last 25 years has led us right into the heart of integrated medicine. And I, I just think that it's really important that we understand this, that we're not going to just fix our brain with, with swallowing a designer pharmaceutical drug, that we really have to look at all the different lifestyle inputs from nutrition to sleep to relationships, relaxation measures using uh, targeted nutraceuticals and herbs and things that can um, have just a positive effect across the board on our brain health and affect all the different mechanisms of action for neurodegeneration. So now let's, let's get into the heart of what we're going to talk about today, which is how to safely and effectively use natural medicine to calm your brain waves, get restorative sleep, build resilience and improve your mood. <laughs> so, a lot a lot to talk about, but that's a part of the beauty of natural medicine is that one single plant can often do all of these different things for us. Um, so calming the brain waves, what does that mean? You know, the human brain waves, we're, we're electrical beings and, and you can actually measure our brain waves on an EEG. And most of us <laughs> during the day walk around in a 
this, the beta uh, brain wave, which is 14 to 30 hertz, which is awake with mental activity. We, we don't tend to have enough of the alpha and theta during the day. Those are more um, kind of restorative brainwave patterns. And many of us aren't getting into that deep sleep at night and getting the, the deep delta waves that, that really help to restore our brain. Um, so let's talk about how natural medicine can help us do that. I want to just quickly run through strategies for calming the brain waves and sleep, sleep, sleep <laughs> should be the first three on here. And sleep is, is just like a magic elixir for the brain. It's, it's when our brain washes itself. It uh, cleans up the metabolic waste that happens during the day just from being alive and and having our, our normal metabolism. So sleep is absolutely critical, um, getting enough hours of sleep, getting good quality sleep, and that's, that's a, a tough, <laughs> tough um, job sometimes, especially for women, especially you know, heading into the menopausal timeframe, perimenopause and beyond, um, and for men too, we can see that it can be a great challenge to get good sleep. And there's a lot of things, you know, sleep hygiene to look at to make sure you're, you're doing a big sleep hygiene piece is, is examining your intake of caffeine and uh, being honest with yourself if, if caffeine is affecting your sleep. A lot of people don't know it, but even, even coffee early in the day can end up affecting your sleep. Um, if you're, you have certain genetics where you're a slow metabolizer of caffeine, or as we age, we sometimes get more sensitive to the effects of caffeine. So just kind of looking at that question for yourself. Uh, breathing techniques, we talked about that. Um, guided meditation, there's so many you know, wonderful things that you can purchase or um, you know, even in, do for yourself in terms of going into a meditative state. And uh, visualization is also another tool. You know, some simple things that I've done over the years is just you know, laying down, eyes closed, getting into that, inducing the relaxation response with breathing, and then just visualizing like a beautiful golden sparkly light, like filling up your whole body and or you know visualizing being in a, a beautiful place somewhere you feel really safe those are, are great techniques and they're free and you don't have to go anywhere to do it and then of course prayer is super super powerful and highly recommend that um, my my free gift <laughs> to you that i'll i'll share with you in the end how to access that i recorded eight years ago i recorded a prayer that came to me during my quiet time so it's very very special and dear to me, um, I'm going to share that with you at the end. This is obviously a huge topic, nutrition. Uh, it is critical for, for our brain health, calming the brain waves, getting good sleep, um, bolstering our mood. And our kitchen really is our pharmacy, or it should be. I'll, I'll just give you the three simple food rules. I didn't invent these. Uh, Michael Pollan, the author, the food author, um, stated these to eat real food, mainly plants, and not too much. So if you can go by those three rules, you'll be doing better than, than most people. So healing the gut. I wish we had many more hours <laughs> to talk about this. Uh, this is part of what I teach in my practice and also will be teaching on the, the Joy Prescription membership site. Um, is about healing the gut and cultivating a healthy microbiome. As you probably are aware, maybe your medicine cabinet <laughs> looks like this. So many people are self-medicating, heartburn, diarrhea, constipation. And while you know, it's important to treat those symptoms, we don't want to just mask them with over-the-counter or even prescription drugs. We want to get to the root of why the gut is off. And there's a functional medicine paradigm called the 5R approach to gut health. And I'll, I'll just super briefly touch on this. Removing, we want to remove things that are in our body that shouldn't be, like parasites and food allergens and toxins. We want to replace things that 
aren't in our body that should be getting good secretion of bile salts and pancreatic enzymes and hydrochloric acid from the stomach. Re-inoculate is the third R, which is uh, speaking about um, getting good healthy bacteria, improving the balance of your microbiome in your gut. Uh, we want to repair the lining. We do that through herbs and nutrition and, and the three steps above it and then rebalancing our life so that we do all these things more automatically and, and don't fall into the same pattern. So again, this would take three hours or more to, to fully unpack for you, but I'll give you the, the super overview is, is just eating real food, you know, figuring out if you're reacting to any of the foods that you're eating, and then high fiber diet that's rich in all the different colors of the rainbow that's going to give your uh, system, uh, your, the, the microbiome, all the healthy bacteria in your gut, that the fiber is the food for the bacteria. And they take the fiber, metabolize it, and then generate butyrate, which is a healing compound that actually heals the lining of the gut. Um, so it's, it's just a really easy intervention is increasing your fiber in your diet. Um, these are the compounds I'm going to talk about today in terms of natural medicines that can calm our nervous system, help us with sleep, help with our mood, with anxiety, and uh, build resilience in the system. So these are what I'm going to talk about. And let's dive in. Here's a beautiful quote from Carl Linnaeus. He's a Swedish botanist, a zoologist, and a physician that lived back in the 1700s. And he developed the system for naming all the organisms and plants on the earth. So he, he recognized uh, the value in plants and said, herbs and plants are medical jewels gracing the woods, fields, and lanes, which few eyes see and few minds understand. Through this want of observation and knowledge, the world suffers immense loss. And I really agree with that. Part of what I've dedicated my life to is just um, uncovering these hidden, hidden jewels in the plants. And what's pictured here is a passion flower. It's a wonderful herb that is just like a healing uh, balm for our nervous system. It can help with anxiety. It can help you drift off to sleep well and you can get this very inexpensively over the counter one of my favorite tea brands is traditional medicinals it was developed by an herbalist it's all usda organic and they have a nighty night tea that has the passion flower in it it's about almost 400 milligrams of passion flower so it's very therapeutic uh, dose and you know just kind of in the evening time before bedtime um, having a cup of that can can help you if you're having difficulty falling asleep. Um, as with any herb, you know you don't want to use it without talking to your doctor if you're taking other medications or you have you know, some significant medical issues, liver issues. But uh, for the most part, passion flower is a very well tolerated, safe herb. I uh, wanted to mention lavender or lavandula angustifolia is um, this herb that is, it's a flower and it's very well studied. Actually, I, I put some references down there for you at the bottom of the slide. They've done some controlled trials, uh, comparing it head to head with a actual a tranquilizing medication, a benzodiazepine, and it is uh, as effective <laughs> at, at helping with anxiety than um, a benzodiazepine medication, which as you may know, those drugs are very sedating, can be quite addictive, and have a lot of negative side effects. They can trigger depression and things like that. So this is one of my go-tos for people dealing with anxiety, panic attacks. Um, it's a lovely, lovely little flower. You can get it in a gel cap form. One of my favorite brands is Integrative Therapeutics. They make a product called Lavella. On, on their website, you can uh, learn more about the, the different studies and things that are um, 
published on, on that compound. So that's a great tool. I've used it personally for, for years uh, intermittently and um, also have many patients have responded really well to this. You don't want to combine it with a, a benzodiazepine like Xanax or Clonopin or Valium because it could you know, be extra sedating, um, but it's, it's not, doesn't tend to be sedating. And if you use it for you know, a month or longer, it can even um, potentially lift the mood somewhat too. So it's, it's a wonderful option for you. So L-theanine, checking the time here, we're doing all right. Um, L-theanine is a, an amino acid that's uh, found in green tea. It can improve our stress perception and our resilience in our body. It also increases serotonin and dopamine production in the brain, which are really important neurotransmitters that help regulate our mood and energy. Um, and speaking of brain waves, L-theanine can significantly increase the alpha brainwave activity, uh, which is critical for attention as well as promoting relaxation. So green tea is a great <laughs> source of L-theanine. Theanine, you can also um, get L-theanine in chewable form or capsule form, and it's, it's fairly um, well tolerated and, and safe uh, to use. And it also has a protective effect on nerve cells that have been overstimulated by glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter. So that's another option. Magnesium, <laughs> and we call it magnesium the miracle mineral because it's found in over 300 different enzymatic reactions in the body. It's so important for our brain health, our muscles, and I, I use it for insomnia for people, for constipation, for muscle tension, anxiety, heart palpitations. I use it in my clinical practice with, with great success. We know it's, it's critical for muscles and, and the heart is one of our most important muscles. It also plays a role in glucose metabolism and it's important for bone health. It's so, so many conditions, PMS, migraines, anxiety, insomnia, um, the, just like a little miracle mineral. And the cool thing is it's found in food, nuts, seeds, whole grains, beans, and green leafy veggies like the kale that's pictured here. So um, eating just a whole foods diet that's really heavy in these compounds can, can replete your system of magnesium. Many, many people are deficient or suboptimal in magnesium because modern living coffee <laughs> depletes your body of magnesium, uh, different medications or over-the-counter drugs like the proton pump inhibitors that that treat acid reflux, they can deplete the body of magnesium and, and then contribute to all these other conditions. So it's, it's really important to get enough in your diet. Um, I check blood levels of this for my patients or red blood cell levels of magnesium. And if it's on the low end, then we replace it um, through a supplement. You gotta be careful, you don't wanna get too much magnesium through supplements and just uh, have to make sure the kidney function is normal. So the safest and best way is to get it through food, um, but it can be certainly therapeutic through supplementation as well. Turmeric, I, this is probably my favorite spice. Ginger is a close second, but uh, turmeric is a rhizome. It grows in the ground and it's, uh, you probably know it uh, from Curry gives curry its yellow color, and it is a super potent natural anti-inflammatory. can help with pain, with menstrual cramps, arthritis pain. It does help maintain a normal inflammatory balance in the body, but it also does so much more. <laughs> it helps to detoxify endotoxins from our gut. Uh, it supports microbiome diversity, so a healthy um, bacterial balance in our gut, which has all sorts of positive benefits from that. It's a very uh, potent antioxidant, which helps us to not age as fast and to produce energy better. And it also has balancing properties for the immune system. So can't say enough about this. There's ways to include it in your food, of course. You can find recipes for golden milk, which is taking the turmeric powder and making it into a paste with coconut oil and black pepper, and then 
uh, heating that up. Um, and then you can use that paste in stews or soups and also make it into a lovely drink with like almond milk or coconut milk. It makes a delicious winter drink. Adaptogens, these are plant compounds that are really helpful for helping our body to manage the effects of chronic stress, helping make us more resilient. And it's, it's just beautiful how, how these basically medicine <laughs> has been built into the plants on, on our planet. This one, I wanna highlight holy basil as an example of an adaptogen. There are so many others, ashwagandha, rhodiola, cordyceps. Uh, these are compounds that have been used for thousands of years in Ayurvedic medicine in India, but we're you know, certainly learning all about the, the benefits through modern science, and finding the, the medicinal compounds within these plants. Um, I chose holy basil to highlight because it is, it's like a wonder, <laughs> a wonder plant. Again, been used for thousands of years in India. It's also known as Tulsi. So you may see like Tulsi tea. Um, I took these bullet points from this review article about Tulsi or holy basil uh, from the Journal of Ayurveda Integrative Medicine. It's a wonderful review article and it basically works on every system in our body to address physical, chemical, metabolic, and psychological stress through a unique combination of pharmacologic actions. It protects our organs and tissues from chemical stress, from pollutants, heavy metals, and it um, has a benefit for our brain function, um, has positive uh, benefits for cognitive function, and also helps to lower anxiety and has some antidepressant properties. This is simple to use. You can just look for a, an organic tea, a Tulsi tea, holy basil tea, and have a cup or two a day. And that's, you know, that's what I do. I uh, think it's just a wonderful addition to a self-care regimen. Wanted to briefly touch on St. John's wort. It's a very beautiful flower that makes a, a red uh, liquid when you leave it in the sunlight. So St. John's wort is a powerful herb. Um, I wanted to, oh, let's go back. I wanted to just give you a caution on St. John's wort that it does induce certain enzymes in the liver, which can make it dangerous when you combine it with pharmaceutical drugs. So the combination of certain pharmaceutical drugs and St. John's wort can be very dangerous, but overall it's, it's a fairly well-tolerated herb that's been used all the world over for a long time for helping support uh, positive mood and there's it's very well studied but i wanted to highlight um, not to use it um, if you're taking any any drugs without talking to uh, a doctor about it so self-care measures just to, to wrap up things here just ideas to calm your brain waves and uh, build resilience going for a walk listening to music dancing, breathing, doing a body scan. That's, that's great. I, I try to do that throughout the day. Um, you know, when I'm sitting at my computer <laughs> and typing and just, you know, saying, okay, where, where's the tension? Where am I holding tension in my jaw or my shoulders or back? And just periodically just being in, in touch with your body and, and seeing what it's telling you in terms of tightness or, or pain, just giving you feedback. Um, gratitude is transformational. So if you don't have a regular practice of like keeping a gratitude journal, that's a great strategy for managing stress. Laughing, watching a funny movie, reaching out, you know, social connections, writing a letter to a friend, uh, giving someone a hug, complimenting them um, and spending time with them. Soaking in a hot bath is one of my favorites. Epsom salt <laughs> with maybe a few drops of lavender essential oil is uh, just a wonderful sensory uh, experience that can really calm your nervous system. The serenity prayer, if you're not familiar with that, uh, Google it. It's just a beautiful way to deal with stress and 
has to do with knowing what, what is ours to carry and worry about and being able to lay down the things that we don't have control over. And, and just the, the mental stance and, and phrase to repeat to yourself that this too shall pass. So any, any difficult thing that you're going through, it, it will pass. Here's um, a quote from Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, which I just wanted to encourage all of you with, that there is actually great value when we go through hard times. It's what grows us into mature, um, compassionate human beings, and she says it really well. The most beautiful people we have known are those who have known defeat, known suffering, known struggle, known loss, and have found their way out of the depths. These persons have an appreciation, a sensitivity, and an understanding of life that fills them with compassion, gentleness, and a deep, loving concern. Beautiful people do not just happen. So let that encourage you. Whenever you're going through, there's, there's a purpose behind it and always, always good and comes out of hard times and trials. This is a quote from uh, Dr. Viktor Frankl. Um, he's a renegade psychiatrist, a Holocaust survivor. He wrote a book, Man's Search for Meaning, and I just wanted to share this with you. Existential frustration is in itself neither pathological nor pathogenic. A man's concern, even his despair over the worthwhileness of life, is an existential distress, but by no means a mental disease. It may well be that interpreting the first in terms of the latter motivates a doctor to bury his patient's existential despair under a heap of tranquilizing drugs. It is his task, rather, to pilot the patient through his existential crisis of growth and development. And I just, I really identify with this. And of course, it, this is not to say that I don't believe in using uh, medications for mental health. I think they can be life-saving and they can you know, be stopgap measures and help, but I think it is really critical that we identify this, you know, the existential frustration or angst. That's, that's our search for meaning. That's our call to walk the spiritual path and navigate through um, these feelings that come up and, and emotions when we're going through dark times that really deserve to be explored. And that's part of what I see um, my role as in, in helping people. So I wanted to just wrap up now and share with you uh, the joy prescription. This is something I've been working on for about six years now. I've developed a membership site at thejoyprescription.com. And let me share just a little bit about that with you and invite you to join me. So what is it? it? It is the gift that God gave me uh, to facilitate my own healing from the stress, anxiety, and depressive symptoms that I had going through residency training and you know, being a, a business owner and a doctor and a mother and all the, all the things. <laughs> so um, it, is, it really is my own healing path and, and the gift that uh, God gave me, but it has also evolved into my personal mission to help other people to recover from anxiety and depression and to build resilience and ultimately to, to live our life to the fullest. So my mission is to empower people with science-based lifestyle medicine and grace-filled mental health solutions. So it basically involves every month, I'm going to have a live group mentoring session that starts April 22nd is the, the first session. And it, it's a private members only site. Um, and I also have a community forum where, you know, in between the monthly sessions, we can interact and, and talk and support each other and, and help, uh, help each other to kind of uh, create our own joy prescriptions. Uh, there's a library of resources on there, recipe, shopping list, and you get professional grade nutritional supplements for 15% off if, uh, if you choose to do that. 
And I just wanted to let everyone know that I, I understand right now that the world is going through something we haven't ever been through before. And a lot of people are um, experiencing extreme financial hardship. And I want to make this available to anyone who wants to participate. So I do have scholarships available. I'm gonna be offering that through April 21st um, before we launch the first session. So please you know, reach out to me through email at help at caringforthebody.org. Um, I purposely priced the, the membership um, site very, very affordable because that my goal is to reach as many people as possible. Um, so it's, it's a lifetime fee of $285. Um, there's a payment plan, but if that is out of reach for you, please let me know and I'd be happy to, to include you for free. So these are, this is what we'll be covering in the, the membership site, all the pieces of the puzzle for brain health. And there's so much to this. I, I'm going to um, delve in deeply into all the self-care measures that we can do just on our own, working with our own mind, our mindset, casting out fear, unforgiveness, uh, use prayer and worship, um, delving into scripture. Uh, this, this is a, a Christian faith-based program. We're going to be talking about automatic negative thoughts and how to deal with those, how to cultivate loving relationships and to be of service to others. And then all the, all the stuff we, we just touched on briefly today, sleep, relaxation, recreation, uh, stress management, movement, play, and then using food as medicine. Of course, I'm, I'm a big proponent of being in nature and, and pet therapy. Um, as well. And then we'll also go in, de in depth <laughs> over time with all the professional health measures. So I'm um, talking about how to rule out coexisting medical conditions that can masquerade as anxiety and depression or contribute to them. So how to just, you know, get a good medical workup. And then we'll, we'll go in in much more <laughs> depth into uh, functional medicine and uh, the herbal and nutrient therapies that I introduced today and many, many others. Um, I'll connect you with biblical coaches and counselors and, and uh, encourage you, you know, to get professional help if you need it. And then we'll also talk about you know, the ways that pharmaceutical drugs can be helpful, the pros and cons, and also helping people to understand the process of, of weaning off of them. So it's uh, very comprehensive and it's, it's meant to be kind of a lifetime membership where um, just mentor you over time on a monthly basis to work through all these things. So this is, I'll leave you with the joy prescription that I created for myself back in 2012, I believe. Um, this is just kind of a summary of it. It's much more in depth than this, but I thought it was a, a nice thing to show you and to, to leave you with. So I wanna encourage you to um, maybe make your own <laughs> uh, joy prescription. So what, what's your joy prescription? That, that's something I'd, I'd love to work with you on and hope that you reach out to me for that. So for those of you who want to connect with me on the medical side of things, um, you know, a big part of my work is creating sacred space for you to do the work that you need to do to uncover the root causes of what's driving uh, brain related symptoms or just health imbalances and help you to work through that. You can go to my website, caringforthebody.org, and under services, you can uh, click on the book a discovery session with me uh, link, and it will take you to a page that looks like this, and uh, get on my schedule to uh, talk about you know what it would look like to work with me one on one. And I you know I realize not everyone is able to travel to Asheville or you know, has the ability to to do that. So the joyprescription.com is, is a very affordable way to uh, connect with me and to get mentoring over time. So I wanted to leave you with a free gift. Uh, if you go to caringforthebody.org slash thank you, 
you'll find an audio recording that I made many years ago. It's just very personal and I wanted to share with, with you. It's, it's something that you can use as a, a daily kind of relaxation, prayer, meditative time. Um, I, I put all the words there so you'll, you'll know what the words are, but just encourage you to explore that and incorporate it into your life if, if you would like to. So never be afraid to trust an unknown future to a known God. I think Corey Ten Boom says this well. This is um, a difficult time for for everyone, and I want to I want to be a support to you if if that's uh, something that you need. Thank you guys so much for all your questions and your positive feedback and support. I I really appreciate each and every one of you being here, and um, love you all, and just wish you health and. Um, and peace during this time. So feel free to reach out to me. Um, help at caringforthebody.org is the the web um, the email that goes uh, directly to my practice. Uh, Jan Vidmar, our patient care coordinator, and I both see those emails. So feel free to email me questions, and uh, I look forward to connecting with you again sometime soon. Take care.